the space station when no one was aboard. That was Expedition 1, and the crew can operate the uh, hatches from their module. So they, um, they when they dock, it's, it's not requiring anybody aboard the International Space Station to take any actions. Now, we do watch the incoming vehicles as a precaution. However, uh, the vehicle can dock autonomously on its own. So the uh, Expedition 1 crew members were able to enter the space station and began our 20 years of continuous human presence. Next question is, what are the astronauts on the International Space Station sleep schedules like? Ah, that's a that's a really great question because we know that uh, their schedules are very uh, meticulous down to the five minutes it's planned out. Is that correct? Absolutely. And their sleep periods uh, look kind of similar to ours. They get a little bit of time before bed to wind down and then they get about an eight and a half hour period of sleep time. And then afterward, they have a pre-sleep time period as well. So they get to wake up a little bit before starting an incredibly busy day <laughs> almost every day. So um, that's like what their sleep schedule is. Dragon's SpaceX for approach initiation. Yes, you're updated. AI time is 0222 UTC. And with that, that is approximately one five minutes earlier than what we were predicting pre flight. So that will be expect to move your suit donning time frame about one five minutes earlier as well. And we'll call you into that at the appropriate time. Okay, copy, 0222, 15 minutes early, and also moves up suit, downing 15 minutes. Thanks for the heads up. Good read back. Words from the core here in Hawthorne, the crew operations and resources engineer to the crew aboard the International Space Station, uh, sharing that that approach initiation burn, which is the next major burn we're looking for, that should come at about uh, 6.22 p.m. Pacific time, so about an hour from now, just over an hour from now. And that also moves up their suit donning time, so they'll start putting their suits on about 15 minutes earlier than they expected. Oh, looking forward to that. And in the meantime, we have another question. Have you and any mission controls slept yet? Have we slept yet? Have you slept yet? <laughs> I got in a few hours last night, but to be honest, it's a, almost too exciting to sleep right now. Right. Um, and so fortunately, we do work in shifts. And so mission controllers, flight controllers in Houston and in Hawthorne, do get the chance to get some rest. We don't want anybody working for 24 <laughs> hours straight, which the crew has now been in orbit for uh, 24 hours now. Yeah. And so uh, they only work about eight or nine hours a shift in mission control. That keeps everybody fresh and uh, making their best decisions. Yeah, that's very important with very um, uh, stringent missions like this that have a lot going on. It's very important that everybody, you know, has their rest and is thinking very clearly um, during these uh, phases. Have you slept yet though? Uh, I, I tried. <laughs> I was too excited last night. <laughs> I, got, I got a little bit of rest, but all very exciting. So I, I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, it's the best kind of no sleep. <laughs> right. <laughs> this question, if NASA launches another resupply ship to the International Space Station, where will it dock? Well, there's a little bit of a difference uh, between docking and berthing. We have two places where spacecraft can dock on the International Space Station. That's those international docking adapters. And docking means the spacecraft can fly in and attach itself to the station. It doesn't really need any specific help from the crew on board. Uh, there are also two stations where a spacecraft can be berthed to the station. This is when we use the Canada Arm 2, or a crew member uses the Canada Arm 2 in the cupola, reaches out and grapples the spacecraft or gets a good grasp in it on it before bringing it in to the space station. They then turn the controls over to teams on the ground and teams on the ground berth it or attach it to the space station. So there are still some uh, open spaces for 
or I should say maybe parking spots, <laughs> parking spots on the space station. And there are also four spots that vehicles can dock on the Russian segment as well. How do astronauts get haircuts while they're in space? That is a very interesting question. How do, <laughs> how do they do it? <laughs> it's one of those things that you just don't think about too often, um, but everybody needs a haircut sometimes and they learn to cut each other's hair. So wow. yes, they do. Before <laughs> they fly, they learn how to cut one another's hair. Uh, and for the men who have short hair, they can use sort of like a, a razor, but it has a vacuum attached to it so that there's some suction and there's not tiny pieces of hair flowing everywhere because you <laughs> don't want to get one of those in your eye. Um, yeah, so <laughs> it's a little bit easier to catch those if they can get them right whenever they're clipped. So they learn how to cut hair. Uh, they cut each other's hair. They, they all become barbers. It's another <laughs> job of an astronaut. <laughs> so many skills you have to learn to be an astronaut, but it actually sounds kind of fun. <laughs> I don't trust myself <laughs> So coming up, we are expecting that approach initiation burn, having completed those other five major burns. And these burns are what propel us toward the International Space Station, getting closer and closer. Let's take a look at the data. Right now, Crew Dragon is 26 kilometers away from the International Space Station. And uh, we will be expecting that burn to come up at about 6.22 p.m. Pacific time. And to put that in miles, we said uh, 20, 25 kilometers, 26, that's 16.1 miles from the space station. So uh, we should be able to start getting some pretty cool views of Crew Dragon as well nice. from the station. Looking forward to that. So just as a reminder, we did complete five major burns on Dragon. That is the phase burn. Uh, if you're following along on the screen, that's the phase burn, the close colliptic burn, then the transfer burn, followed by the close, the final colliptic burn. And now we are entering into the approach burn, which will swing Dragon up in front of the International Space Station, as you kind of see on that graphic um, and then there's a number of checkpoints that the vehicle will be um, checking in as it gets closer and closer to the space station prior to the soft capture and hard capture of the Dragon to the station. And so far we have seen the completion of those burns like you talked about. Those use a combination of the thrusters on Dragon uh, being the service section thrusters around Dragon itself. Additionally, those forward bulkhead thrusters under the nose cone, a combination of those are used for those burns. And now we have some more to look forward to. Uh, one is the approach out of plane burn. This can be skipped by Dragon if we realize that uh, we don't necessarily need the burn and the uh, the, the vehicle decides that for itself. It knows exactly where it is in space. Uh, that would be coming up at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. We'll see if it's necessary. And then at 6.05 p.m. Pacific time, we'll be looking for the go, no go for the approach initiation burn. This really sets us on course to link up or to get even closer to the space station. That approach initiation burn would be at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time, so about an hour and 10 minutes from now. And that would be about a 90 second burn. There may also be an approach initiation mid-course burn. And this is a fine tuning maneuver, another one that Crew Dragon makes the determination of what it really needs. It might need a small burn, it might need a significant burn to put it exactly where we want to be on approach to the International Space Station. At 7.05 p.m. Pacific, we'll be looking for the go, no go to approach to waypoint one. Now, Waypoint 1 moves Dragon directly in front of the station. It's about 220 meters away at this point, and it's directly in front of its docking port. Uh, that's the Node 2 forward port. Before we go to Waypoint 1, we need to get that pole, but we'll actually be around Waypoint 0. That's 400 meters below, and that occurs at 7.15 p.m. Pacific time. 
At 7.29 p.m. Pacific time, we will have a go, no go to approach Waypoint 2. And this is when we're getting really close to the International Space Station. Waypoint 2 is only 20 meters from the station. And Dragon will focus on aligning its docking system with the International Docking Adapter. It'll take about five minutes from Dragon to get from Waypoint 2 to the International Space Station. So it's a short journey, but uh, from that 20 meter mark, just about five minutes. And just before Crew Dragon docks with the International Space Station, we might hear a call out. Uh, we will hear the call out CHOP. That's Crew Hands Off Point. That would be coming at 7.59 and 35 seconds p.m. Pacific time. It's very specific right now because that's about two meters before contact. And uh, we're looking for contact and capture of Dragon. Dragon SpaceX. Dragon is seven minutes from an out of plane burn. Seven minutes to the out of plane burn, thanks. And we are also less than 2.5 hours from the earliest docking time. We got be less than 2.5 to earliest docking. Thank you for that. Getting really close, and they took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, we'll be looking for contact and capture around 8 p.m. Pacific time. So we'll be standing by for that. Uh, and then docking will be complete once those hard hooks have finished driving or giving us hard capture, I should say, around 8.13 p.m. Pacific time. And those are variable times. But we also heard that we are expecting an approach out of plane burn coming up shortly. Uh, the CPU, Dragon's computer, has determined that uh, that will be necessary just to put them on the proper path as we continue our journey toward the International Space Station. So stay tuned with us. We are covering every step of Dragon's journey.
Dragon, SpaceX, Uplin, complete now and again. Dragon, copy. And with that call, we know the oop burn or the out of plane burn is complete. Uh, that was a tentative burn. We didn't necessarily know if we would need it once we got on orbit or not. But Crew Dragon is a very smart vehicle and it can make that call on its own. It constantly knows where the International Space Station is and its own place in space. So it's not necessarily uh, programmed in by the flight controllers here on the ground or punched in by the crew on orbit. Uh, but the vehicle puts it in the exact place it needs to be for the upcoming approach initiation burn. That will be at 6.22 p.m. Pacific time. Got some really cool views here on your left hand screen is station looking at dragon that very bright spot on the screen but on your right hand screen that is dragon looking at the station yeah so really cool views of them looking at each other they're close enough where they can see each other both in sight now yeah getting their first glimpse of each other, I guess. We've been able to see a few views of Crew Dragon from the space station before now, uh, but the first time that we've seen station from Crew Dragon, so getting ever closer. And we're looking about two and a half hours away from docking now. Uh, Crew Dragon is currently 15 miles away from the International Space Station.
Carrying in SpaceX for suit meeting and status. And go ahead for suit donning. You are go to perform suit donning per procedure 4.010. We have already gone external with cameras. Please just let us know when we can come back on board. Additionally, reminder to power off and clean your displays using your comfort garment, then power back on as a part of your suit donning. Also, due to the ISS sleep period, we plan to delay the big loop configuration and comm checks a bit, now planning this for approximately 0200 UTC. Finally, we are expecting an extended period of RADICOM on TETRIS from 156 UTC to 208 UTC. How copy? Okay, we copy. Um, we're not going to configure for uh, the big loop until zero two. I think you said two two. Zero two hundred. Go for four dot zero one zero suit donning and audio configuration. We'll let you know when you can come back on board and copy on the uh, Rad Tedris. And the big loop calm time is zero two hundred UTC. Okay, 0200 for Big Loop. We are just over two hours from docking and the crew is getting ready to get back into their spacesuits for the rendezvous and docking. And uh, we'll be looking for integrated operations to begin. SpaceX flight controllers closely coordinating maneuvers with the teams in Houston. Uh, the ground controllers initiate and monitor the preparations for the approach, including establishing communications with the station and initializing the spacecraft's navigation sensors to prepare for autonomous docking. Now we're getting very close to getting the go-ahead for approach. During the approach, space SpaceX flight controllers will work in tandem with NASA with the NASA team in Houston to activate and test out a number of systems on Dragon, including bidirectional communications with the station using the C2V2 system, which stands for common communications for visiting vehicles and sets up a data stream from Dragon to the station, giving another path for Dragon telemetry to come to the ground and giving an additional command capability to astronauts aboard the station. They'll also maneuver Dragon to the proper attitude and initialize the navigation sensors used for the methodical approach to station. And we are in those integrated operations, so teams working together. Uh, and the next call outs we hope to hear will be at the top of the hour. We'll be looking for big loop communications. We've heard that a couple of times from the core. And that refers to communications with the space station from the Crew Dragon spacecraft, those vehicles being able to share telemetry and communications with each other. Uh, and we want to we want to hold on that a little bit because the crew aboard the International Space Station is actually still asleep right now. <laughs> and we don't want to wake them up just yet if we don't have to. So those will be the next uh, the next comms we will probably hear. And then afterward, we'll be looking for that approach initiation burn coming up at about 6.22 p.m. Pacific time.
everyone. Thanks for joining us for this live coverage of Crew Dragon on its way to the International Space Station with the Crew One crew. And you're getting views of both of those vehicles right now. On your left hand side is a view of Crew Dragon from the space station. And on your right hand side is a view of the space station from Crew Dragon. So getting a look at each other as they get closer and closer. Uh, they are now in the approach initiation phase, having left that rendezvous phase behind whenever they reach uh, 30 kilometers away from the International Space Station. And we are still answering your questions with the hashtag AskNASA as we wait for some upcoming approach milestones. The next big one of those being the approach initiation burn at 622 p.m. Pacific. But this first question is, what is the pressure difference between Dragon and the International Space Station? The pressure in the vehicles should be similar, somewhat similar. We're looking at about 14.2 PSI on the station right now. And to put that into perspective, 14.7 is about what we're used to at sea level on Earth. So we try and keep that atmosphere similar. It can vary uh, by a few tenths of a degree. Got another question. Can the astronauts smell and taste normally in space? Huh. Yeah, you wouldn't. Uh, it's not the first thing you think about maybe being altered by space exploration, but the astronaut's sense of smell is slightly altered once they arrive at the station, and that makes tasting a little bit more difficult as well. So I know they like being able to put spices on their foods, <laughs> hot sauce, things like that. Uh, so that way it makes them just a little bit stronger because they do lose a little bit of that sense of smell once they arrive. Um. Got another question. Since the SpaceX suits are not EVA suits designed for outside the station, which space suits would they be wearing for outside? So good point. These are very different suits. These uh, SpaceX suits are meant to be worn inside. And as mm -hmm. Jesse mentioned, they are really meant for any sort of depressurization of the cabin, which we never plan for. But that is why we wear them. Uh, we have EVA suits, as you mentioned, for trips outside. EVA is extravehicular activity or spacewalk. These are those bigger white suits you're used to. They're a little bit harder to move around in, but they have many layers of protection against the vacuum of space and, of course, the varying temperatures experienced in space as well. Um, got another question. How come you can't see stars from the International Space Station, but on Earth we can look up and see the stars? So actually, you can see stars from the International Space Station. I think even in those views that we were showing earlier, looking at Dragon, you could see the stars from the space station. But looking at the station, uh, we got a lot of sun beaming into the camera. So it was really hard to see uh, the stars in the background. But you can still see the stars, uh, probably even better out in space. <laughs> yeah, because you're really not exposed to as much light pollution on the International Space Station. Highly encourage you to go follow the space station on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, because sometimes the astronauts take beautiful photos of the Earth at night. They can see the Aurora Borealis um, and the stars at the Mil Milky Way sometimes. It's pretty amazing. Got another question. Do the solar panels produce enough energy for the International Space Station or do they have to rely on another source for power? If so, what is that source? The solar panels are massive on the International Space Station and so they do collect all of the energy that we use on board. But what happens when we go into the dark? So when we go into the dark, uh, when we're in the light, the International Space Station is using those solar panels and channeling some of that energy through a BCDU, that's a battery charge discharge unit. So there are some batteries that hold that power. And then when we're in the dark, that battery charge. The ground is go for approach initiation. We will be enabling the maneuver shortly the expected maneuver start time is 0222 UTC. Okay, we copy. Uh, go for the approach initiation 0222 UTC.
great news there from the core to the crew. Uh, there was a poll conducted here, and the team was go for the approach initiation burn. Likewise, now that we're in integrated operations, a poll was also conducted in Houston, and they are go for the approach initiation burn as well. And confirming that 6.22 p.m. Pacific time uh, is when that burn should begin. We've got another question. How long can astronauts stay at the International Space Station and in space? Mrs. Reed's eighth grade science class is wondering. <laughs> That's a good question. And so far we've had an astronaut stay almost a full year on the International Space Station. We actually had a couple, an astronaut and a cosmonaut uh, back in 2015, spent almost an entire year on the International Space Station. Uh, the longest stay ever was Valerie Polyak. Polyakov, Polyakov for 437 days on space station Mir. So that's the record. Uh, but we do these long duration stays because, you know, our future goal is to go on even longer duration missions to the moon and to Mars. And so that's going to require us to really understand how the human body adapts to microgravity. That's a, that's a long time, a little over a year. Is that yeah. right? And crew one is going to be there for six months, so less than half of that. But Still you know, a long time. They'll build up their tolerance to get there. <laughs> this question from Brantley, could Dragon be manually docked? Yes, uh, Dragon was designed to be autonomous, but it was also designed in case of any emergency or any nece necessity uh, that the crew on board can manually dock if needed. And they do all that training here in Hawthorne in the crew training room. You know, they practice docking just in case, but it is autonomous. So in the best scenario, they don't have to manually dock. And back.
station on two for the status. Okay, just wanted to give you a heads up. We're about eight minutes ahead on the timeline and we will be configuring the big loop shortly. So you will have a comm connection with Dragon here in a few minutes. Okay, copy on the big loop um, and that'll be on two, correct? That's correct, we'll do comm checks on two. Dragon SpaceX on Dragon to Ground. Go ahead. The 144K bi-directional link has been established. Please change your push to talk destination to ISS and then initiate a comm check. Dragon copies in work. And this is Dragon, come, come the big loop. Dragon SpaceX, I hear you loud and clear, how me? And I've got you loud and clear as well. Great to hear, please initiate a comm check with ISS to confirm that path, thank you. Roger that. Okay, uh, station, uh, this is Dragon, comm check on the big loop. And Houston Station, this is Kate. I heard you, but I have not heard Dragon yet. Copy all, Kate, we're checking. Thanks. And station, this is Dragon, comm check on the big loop. Oh, what a good voice to hear. Dragon, this is station, I've got you loud and clear. Hey, Kate, it's good to hear your voice as well. SpaceX, SpaceX, SpaceX Dragon, Dragon, and, and, and Tommy four decimal five. This is the pilot two contract.
Great news there from uh, Crew Dragon and the International Space Station. Both now have communications with one another. We heard the excitement in uh, Kate <laughs> Rubin's voice getting that comm check with Commander Mike Hopkins. Mm -hmm. So we're going to check in with Brandy over in Mission Control Houston. How's it going over there, Brandy? Things are good over here. Thanks so much. Yeah, as you heard, Kate Rubens is awake now and jumping straight into her day. Uh, now that she's got those comm checks done, the first thing that she'll be doing is closing the shutters on the cupola to keep the windows protected from any contamination that might occur during the Dragon's approach. She can open them up for a look if, if she needs to, but primarily she'll be using computers inside the cupola to monitor the Dragon as it uh, comes in closer to the International Space Station for docking. Uh, she'll be just making sure that it's where it's supposed to be at all times as it does uh, get closer and closer over the course of the night. Her work will really pick up, though, after docking. Uh, that's when it's time to open the space station side of the hatch, and she's got a lot of work to do for that. Um, I do want to warn you that the hatch opening won't take place right away after docking. There are quite a number of steps that we have to go through to get uh, those, those two crews all on the same side of the hatch. Uh, first, Rubens will start by opening the hatch between the Harmony node and the pressurized mating adapter. That's a kind of a short tunnel that connects the Harmony node to the international docking adapter, which is what's going to allow the Dragon to dock to the International Space Station. But before that hatch is open, the small space between the station side and the Dragon side has to be pressurized. You'll hear that called the vestibule over the course of the night. Uh, up until docking, it will have been exposed to the vacuum of space, so they need to fill it up with air and make sure the air pressure matches that on uh, the other sides of those, those two hatches, the Space Station and the Dragon. So that takes a little while, uh, but in the meantime, we are growing ever closer to being able to see all members of the Dragon crew joining the Expedition 64 crew on board the International Space Station. Getting a little closer, so I'll throw it back now to Hawthorne so they can give you an update on the approach initiation burn as we wait. Thanks, Brandy. Great to hear from you and uh, great to hear that things are going well on the International Space Station side. We copy that that, uh, that docking to hatch and opening time will take a couple of hours and we will be here for every single second of it. Coming up next, we will be looking for the approach initiation burn and that should come around 6.22 p.m. Pacific time.
What you can see on your screen is the astronauts getting suited up and strapped into their seats. They're preparing for that initiation, uh, approach initiation burn. Um, looks like they're almost ready. Yeah, we're getting really close now. And that'll be uh, scheduled actually from a minute from now, 6.22 p.m. Pacific time. We'll be looking for that burn to occur. Uh, it should be about a minute and a half long and that will, uh, the thrusters will fire on Dragon to, it'll, it's currently about 2.5 kilometers below station. And this will swing Dragon up until it's about 400 meters or quarter mile directly below the station. And this maneuver will also move Dragon inside of one of those two checkpoints around the station that requires a set of go, no go pulls with the different control teams. The first checkpoint is called the approach ellipsoid or uh, as you might hear it called the AE. It's an imaginary shape measuring four by two by two kilometers, essentially a large three-dimensional oval. Before Dragon is given permission to move inside the approach ellipsoid, the capsule is configured to be on what is known as a 24-hour safe trajectory. This means that if Dragon lost all control through to its thrusters, it would be at least 24 hours before its trajectory would move inside the approach ellipsoid. So that go for the approach initiation burn was also the go for moving in that inside that approach ellipsoid. And that means things are all checking out well on Dragon. We are standing by listening for that call that the approach initiation burn has begun. Currently looking about an hour and 40 minutes from docking. And the burn has begun, as we mentioned, looking at around 90 seconds for this burn and an amazing photo here, or video, I should say, <sighs> of the International Space Station from Crew Dragon becoming ever clearer as it gets closer. Yeah, you can really see it now. Before it looked kind of just like a bright light. Now you can kind of see the shape of the station there. A reminder that approach initiation burn currently underway. And even Baby Yoda is ready for it. One minute, 15 seconds into the approach initiation burn. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Burn complete, nominal burn, and reminder to review your impulsive retreat recovery cue cards if desired. Hey, Dragon copies, and uh, we saw a good burn, and review the cue cards, uh, winning. Station copies, thanks. That concludes the approach initiation burn, about 90 second burn. And communications from Crew Dragon and the International Space Station, letting them know they can review some back away procedures if need be. However, everything's still proceeding nominally with Crew Dragon just completing that approach initiation burn. That brings them up to the 400 meter below station point. Next burn coming up is the approach initiation mid course burn. That should be about 6.55 p.m. Pacific time. That's another one of those fine tuning maneuvers uh, and Dragon's computer will determine what is necessary for that burn just to keep it on track, moving in uh, even closer to the International Space Station. Again, what you're looking at on your screen is a view from Dragon looking at the International Space Station. We're now under seven kilometers away from the International Space Station, a little over 23 minutes to that approach initiation mid-course burn. And should arrive at waypoint zero, at 400 meters below station in just 42 minutes. That's the first checkpoint the vehicle can hold there or it can continue if all systems check out.
we'll do a go, no go to approach to waypoint one before we arrive at waypoint zero, because as I mentioned, uh, waypoint zero is not necessarily a hold point if everything is still looking good. So we'll also be looking to hear that, uh, that go for waypoint one. And waypoint one is what moves, or when Dragon moves directly in front of the station, it'll be about 220 meters away at that point and directly in front of its docking port, which is the node two forward port. What you're seeing is a live view inside of the capsule with the crew checking out their display panels right in front of them. As a reminder, all of these burns are happening uh, autonomously. The crew is simply monitoring, as you said, using those display panels. They're not controlling Crew Dragon at this point. They do have the option to do so if they needed to. But as we mentioned, the vehicle's been performing well and putting us right on track where we need to be. Yeah, it makes their ride pretty easy. Again, just as a reminder, what you're looking at is a view inside of the capsule. On your left side is Mike Hopkins, and on your right is Victor Glover. This is a view inside Hawthorne Mission Control, where flight controllers are monitoring all the systems aboard Crew Dragon, and as we mentioned earlier, we are now in integrated operations, meaning there's a whole other control room in play, and that's Mission Control Houston, the view right here. Uh, they are monitoring everything aboard the International Space Station. They're both conducting these polls that we're mentioning because we are in integrated operations. We want to make sure both sides are go before we move Crew Dragon closer to the International Space Station. We've gotten all goes for all of those polls tonight so far. And the next poll coming up should be for Waypoint One. Six, uh... Station, go ahead. And sorry, Kate, uh, that was for SpaceX. We're getting ready to start our seat leak checks. Copy.
this view coming to you live from Crew Dragon. This is a view of the International Space Station from the Crew Dragon vehicle as Crew One continues to make their way to the station. They launched at 7.27 p.m. Eastern Time yesterday, have completed the five major burns, exited the rendezvous phase, and are now approaching the space station. We're looking at uh, docking coming up in about an hour and 15 minutes, potentially, um, and that's a, a flexible time. And we, before that, though, have an approach initiation mid-course burn. That should be in about four minutes from now. About 14 minutes from now, the teams will do a go, no go for the vehicle to move to waypoint zero. That is 400 meters below the International Space Station. Afterward, they will do the go, no go to approach waypoint two. Uh, that's coming up at 729 p.m. Pacific. And waypoint two is when the vehicle is just 20 meters away from the International Space Station. So that's the last hold point for the vehicle. And then after waypoint zero, uh, they will approach even closer, do a go, no go pull for docking. Um, and then after that go, no go pull, will be uh, when they depart from waypoint two and then do a crew hands off point check um, and then initiate contact, which will be first a soft capture um, followed by a hard capture uh, completing docking. Yeah, and that uh, crew hands off point is a reminder to the crew. It's just a call from the teams here to the ground uh, it's a reminder to the crew to, if they are maneuvering the vehicle in any way, obviously they're not, or they shouldn't be because it's autonomous, uh, but to not maneuver the vehicle anymore, it comes about when Crew Dragon's about two meters away from the docking port just before that soft capture. So we're looking at about two minutes and 40 seconds now until that mid-course maneuver. Crew Dragon will execute the burn, uh, putting it exactly where it needs to be to begin the next step of the approach sequence. We also heard recently uh, the crew, as you saw earlier, were in their suits and they'll be in their suits until after docking. We heard that they had four good suit leak checks. So that's always good news coming from the crew. And we are standing by for that next, uh, that next burn, the mid-course maneuver.
We've got confirmation that the approach initiation mid-course burn has begun. We are standing by uh, for the timing on that burn, but that did happen on time. And once it's complete, the next milestone we'll be looking for is the go, no go poll for the uh, approach to waypoint zero. Just standing by for the confirmation for that approach initiation mid course burn, which has already begun. And once this burn is complete, as we mentioned, we'll have the go, no go for waypoint zero. That will put us about 400 meters below station once we reach it. This is the first checkpoint. The vehicle doesn't have to hold here. Uh, it can continue on if all of the systems check out. And once it continues on, it will go to waypoint one. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop burn complete, nominal burn. The trajectory has converged on waypoint zero. Dragon copy is good burn and conversion on waypoint zero. Good news. Good news for a good burn. And that will put us in line with where we need to be for waypoint zero, 400 meters below the station. We will also move to waypoint one shortly after. That's where Dragon moves in front of the station, approximately 220 meters away and directly in front of the docking port, the node to forward port. They'll also need a go at that time to move inside the keep out sphere. That's a invisible line with a 200 meter radius around the International Space Station. They'll need to make sure Dragon is four orbits safe or about six hours safe. If any of its thrusters were to fail for some reason, meaning it wouldn't move inside the keep out sphere during that time period. And after we reach waypoint one, our next destination will be waypoint two, only 20 meters away from the International Space Station and the very last hold point before we move on in. And after waypoint two, there will be a go, no go pull before docking begins, uh, but that should happen very shortly after we reach waypoint two and then Docking uh, should occur just a few minutes after that. Yeah, it'll take about five minutes to get from that 20 meter hold point, waypoint two, into docking. And the first call we'll look here just before docking is chop, crew hands off point, uh, meaning that they should not execute any maneuvers for a dragon. Pretty much exactly <laughs> it means exactly what it sounds like. Off. Um, and then we'll look for soft capture. Soft capture call means that the uh, soft capture ring has come in contact with the international docking adapter. That ring will retract, bring crew dragon in, and then we will wait for 12 hooks to drive to give us the hard capture. And once docking is complete, uh, it will take a little bit for um, the APAS hatch to open and dragon hatch to open, but open, uh, but that should occur you know, about an hour, maybe an hour and, a, hour and a half after docking has completed. So there are a few um, checks that they do have to still do after docking is complete and confirmed, uh, but shortly after that, they'll be able to uh, enter the station. Yeah, those leak checks ever important when we are Very talking important. about the vacuum <laughs> of space. So uh, those will occur during the time that Crew Dragon is docked. The crew will also get an opportunity to doff or take off their suits, uh, get into those more comfortable clothes again before they float into their new home for the next six months. But as you just heard, we had a good approach initiation mid-course maneuver burn, putting us on proper trajectory to reach waypoint zero, the 400 meter point away from the International Space Station and the next call coming up, we will be listening for a go, no go for Waypoint Zero in about five minutes. We are just about a kilometer away from the International Space Station, so getting closer and closer. It's very slow and steady, but almost there.
Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. The ground is go for approach zero. We will be enabling the maneuver shortly. Expected maneuver start time is 0309 UTC. Reminder that Dragon will nominally continue approach through waypoint one toward waypoint two without stopping at waypoint one. Okay, Dragon copy 0309. You will be enabling the approach to zero shortly, and it will not stop. And we see the approach allowed now. Good feedback. Station Houston, expect to start monitoring Dragon in approximately 25 minutes. Copy, 25 minutes, thank you. some really incredible views as Dragon gets closer and closer to the International Space Station. Just a minute ago, we did see a live view from Dragon looking at the space station. Uh, very, it, it was a little bright because of the sun. There it is right there on your right-hand screen, the International Space Station. You could see how close they are, almost there. On your left-hand screen is the station looking back at Dragon. We heard a few calls there. Uh, the crew received the go from both the team here in Hawthorne and the team in Mission Control Houston to proceed to waypoint zero. And if everything checks out, they will also move through waypoint zero, which is 400 meters below station. They'll pass through waypoint one as well and head on to waypoint two. And waypoint two is 20 meters away from the space station. So we expect to reach waypoint zero about nine minutes from now. That's 7.09 p.m. Pacific time. So standing by, awaiting for them to reach that waypoint. But we are getting really close now. We could be about an hour away from docking. Yeah, we're just about 600 meters away uh, from the station right now. And just about eight minutes from that uh, go, no go for waypoint one. Just a reminder that this is all autonomous. Dragon is completely flying on its own. Wow, look at that view on the left hand side. You can actually make out the nose cone uh, on top of Dragon there. <laughs> wow, amazing views. Obviously, the space station is in an orbital nighttime and um, soon in just the next few minutes we should see them crossing that terminator line into orbital daytime but they're looking down right now space station 262 statute miles over earth as space station and dragon fly over tanzania <laughs> Such a cool view. And as a reminder, we do have the nose cone still attached to Dragon on this version of Dragon. Whereas previously our, our cargo Dragon, uh, we actually deployed that nose cone. So now that we keep the nose cone attached and this helps with uh, reusability efforts so that we don't have to make a new one, don't have to install a new one when uh, Dragon returns. As we saw earlier, the crew is inside Crew Dragon, suited up in their seats, strapped in, and they will be arriving at Waypoint Zero in it looks like about seven minutes. Just such a cool view of Dragon from the station looking down uh, as it's passing over Earth. 
they are moving pretty quickly. Uh, now that you could see Dragon uh, in view, you can see how fast it is moving against uh, the background of Earth there. And Dragon is approaching station now at half a meter per second. It's a bit slower than we were seeing earlier, but that's because we are so much closer to station now. We have to make every single maneuver very fine-tuned, very deliberate. You'll start to see things get brighter, as we mentioned, as Space Station and Crew Dragon enter an orbital daytime. You'll be able to see a little bit of the ocean below, and then eventually, uh, in just a few minutes, both the vehicles will be flying over Madagascar. Only about five, four minutes away now from uh, the arrival at Waypoint Zero, 400 meters away from the International Space Station. And we're just under 500 meters away, so once we get to Waypoint Zero, we will be 400 meters away. Basically, we'll just be passing through waypoint zero through that uh, 400 meter point and going, uh, continuing on. The next hold point would be waypoint one. That is 220 meters away. They'll need to go to move inside the keep out sphere, a 200 meter radius, an invisible line around the International Space Station. This is the same for every vehicle that arrives and departs the station. We make sure that it is a go to move inside. And this means if Dragon were to lose control of its thrusters for some reason, it would be four orbit safe or six hours before it crossed into that 200 meter radius, the keep out sphere. So if everything looks good, Crew Dragon can move through waypoint one and up to waypoint two, which will put us only 20 meters away from the International Space Station. Another view from Crew Dragon looking at its future destination, its future home for the next six months, the International Space Station even becoming more and more clearly defined as they approach it, as we said earlier, at about half a meter per second. You can see it shining brightly with the sun uh, beaming off of the International Space Station. And our astronauts inside, as we mentioned, suited up, strapped in, monitoring but not controlling the vehicle. Crew Dragon continues to fly autonomously. And that is Madagascar that both vehicles are flying over right now. Just as a reminder, the crew is suited up and they did perform leak checks just as they did when they got suited up and ingressed the vehicle uh, prior to liftoff yesterday. And just a little look back at what brought us to this point. If you're just joining us, Crew Dragon lifted off yesterday on a Falcon 9 rocket at 7.27 p.m. Eastern time from Kennedy Space Center, beginning their journey to the International Space Station. They completed their first burn last night, the phase burn, and then got a good night's sleep uh, they had a phase adjust burn this morning added in there by Dragon's computers to make sure it was on the right trajectory to the space station and then had the boost burn at 8.22 a.m. Pacific time. About 45 minutes later, we saw the closed co-elliptic burn. That maintained an orbit roughly 10 kilometers below station for Dragon. We had a short out-of-plane burn. Another one added in by the Dragon CPU, the computer system. We moved on to the transfer burn and then the final co-elliptic burn. Those rounded out our five major burns as part of the rendezvous phase for Crew Dragon. Once we reached the 30 meter, 30 kilometer distance from station we were out of that rendezvous point and then moved into the approach phase that puts us at the approach out of plane burn another short burn that the dragon computers executed we moved into approach and docking and we saw that 
approach initiation burn take place at 6.22 p.m. Pacific time. We also had a short mid-course maneuver. And now we're just under a minute to waypoint zero. Looks like the station is zooming in on Dragon. Now you can really clearly see Dragon from the station. That looks amazing. Yeah, you can see that nose cone is open, just like yeah. you mentioned. That nose cone protects uh, the forward bulkhead thrusters. It also protects the, uh, the hatch that the astronauts will float through once they are attached to the International Space Station. This is not the same hatch they entered yesterday when it was no. on the launch pad. They won't, uh, that hatch won't be open again until they splash down about six months from now. Yeah, and that nose cone only protects um, the GNC uh, just through a scent, but in the vacuum of space, we don't need that protection. So we have it deployed so that uh, we can expose the GNC so that it can navigate. waiting patiently. Less than a quarter of a mile away from the International Space Station now. Amazing that we're getting these views inside the cabin during these dynamic operations. It's really cool to see that side-by-side -side crew inside of the vehicle and then the shot of the Dragon capsule so close to the International Space Station. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Approach zero has started and the trajectory has converged on waypoint one. Expect arrival at waypoint one at 0334 UTC. Okay, copy 0334 UTC, arrival at waypoint one, good burn, and we've converged on waypoint one. So we've now passed waypoint zero. We're just a little under 24 minutes away from waypoint one, which means we are inside of that 400 meters from station. As we mentioned, uh, we have passed waypoint zero. They gave us a time of 7.34 p.m. Pacific that we should reach waypoint one, but we do not have to hold there. That uh, waypoint one is approximately 220 meters away from the station and Dragon would be directly in front of the node two forward port, its docking port. And if everything checks out, we can move through waypoint one, we'll have to have the go to move inside the keep out sphere, a 200 meter invisible line uh, radius around the International Space Station. And that go confirms that uh, if we were to lose control of Dragon's thrusters for any reason, we would be four orbits or about six hours safe from moving inside that keep out sphere. So we'll need that go uh, for us to pass through waypoint one and then the next stop would be waypoint two, about 20 meters from station.
again, we're uh, about 15 minutes or so away from approaching waypoint one. Waypoint one will bring us about 220 meters from the International Space Station. And we don't have to hold there. Um, if we get the go, we can continue to waypoint two, which will bring us 20 meters. Once we reach waypoint two, we will pause there. Um, as we mentioned, the crew is inside, they're seated up. They won't have to push any buttons or fire any thrusters. Dragon is doing this all on its own. It's completely autonomous, meaning the crew is just monitoring when you see them looking at their screens. Uh, and waypoint two, as you mentioned, is 20 meters away from the International Space Station. Once we reach that point, it'll take us about five minutes until we'll be looking for that soft capture time.
check it out. We've got views of Crew Dragon continuing its approach to the International Space Station. If you just look to the left of the Canada arm there, you can see it uh, continuing its way. It just recently made it through Waypoint Zero, that 400 meters away or below the station. And uh, we are next going to move through Waypoint One. That's 220 meters away directly in front of the docking port, the Node 2 forward port. That's also where Dragon docked during Demo 1 and Demo 2. We'll be looking for the go to move inside the keep out sphere, a 200 meter radius. It's an invisible line around the station. It's uh, something that helps our flight controllers monitor vehicles as they approach and even depart the International Space Station. Such a cool view seeing Dragon with the Canada arm up from the station and Earth in the background. And uh, we used to use the Canada arm to capture Dragon uh, before it was uh, configured into, into this design, this new Crew Dragon design, and it docks autonomously. But for a lot of our visiting vehicles, we have to use the Canada arm too. The astronauts will reach out and grapple a spacecraft or grasp it once it gets close enough. And then flight controllers on the ground will berth it or attach it to the port on the International Space Station. But Dragon is fully autonomous. The astronauts are strapped in their seats, monitoring the mission, awaiting the milestones as we uh, move through Waypoint 1. Should be coming up in just a couple of minutes and continue our approach to Waypoint 2, 20 meters away from the space station and that last checkpoint before we move in for docking. Station on station ground two. I'm in one dot one oh four crew dragon approach and retreat monitoring. Houston copies, and we were ready for that as well. We are about 10 minutes away from waypoint one. Again, that is where Dragon will swing up and out in front of the station. And that'll bring us about 220 meters away from station, uh, which will bring us to what we call the docking access, which essentially means that we'll be right in front of the docking port. And we, we don't have to hold at waypoint one uh, as long as we get that clear to move inside the keep out sphere, that 200 and meter, 200 meter radius around the International Space Station, it's invisible, helps us monitor the arrival and departure of visiting vehicles. And this awesome view over the shoulder of our commander and pilot, Mike Hawkins and Victor Glover, just monitoring the mission. Dragon is flying autonomously. 
We are about 300 meters away. Closing in on just about one meter per second. So just about 80 meters to go until waypoint one. Amazing view of the International Space Station. That's from the cameras aboard Crew Dragon. Both getting a good look at each other. <laughs> it's kind of cool to see them both looking at each other as they approach each other. <laughs> Absolutely. And the crew on board also monitoring on their three display panels there in front of them. This is all autonomous, so they really don't have to do much except for enjoy the ride. Um, but they do get to watch on those display panels uh, where they're at during this approach here. You can also see the International Space Station on that far right and the far left panel. Uh, so they're getting really the same view that we are right here. I'm sure they're pretty excited about making it to their new home in space. But uh, once they reach waypoint one, as we mentioned, they don't have to stop. That'll be that 220 meter point. They'll move inside the keep out sphere at 200 meters. And then the next stop will be waypoint two. Crew will be 20 meters away from the International Space Station. Dragon will focus on aligning its docking system with the International Docking Adapter based on the attitude of the station. And it'll be about five minutes from that waypoint to the 20 meter spot until contact and capture. We'll be looking for that CHOP call, stands for crew hands off point two meters before contact. And this means uh, the crew is not commanding the vehicle. They haven't been at this time, but uh, the vehicle can still have an abort at that time. SSC However, it will not be. I've got good RPOP data on SSC 17. SSC 4 says RPOP is not receiving Dragon 2 data from PCS. Is that expected? Copy that, Kate. And Kate, we can go ahead and fix that by cycling it from the ground, or you can perform that task on the SSC, whichever is your preference. you guys do that thing. Copy, we're putting in work now. Astronaut Kate Rubens, who's on the International Space Station, currently the only American on the International Space Station. Uh, she is joined by her two Russian cosmonaut friends. Uh, that is Sergei Ryzhikov and Sergei Kutsverchkov. They'll be welcoming four new crew members to the orbiting laboratory. But she is monitoring the approach of Crew Dragon She's also not commanding the approach. And as we mentioned, she won't be using the Canada Arm 2 to reach out and grapple the vehicle, but she uh, was working to get some data and the ground team is going to uh, recycle that data for her, or restart that for her. As we were mentioning, we were discussing CHOP, the crew hands off point. The vehicle knows if it should abort. So at that point, the crew would not be commanding anything. However, everything's still looking healthy on Dragon and on the International Space Station. And this view that you're seeing here is from the station, from the node to docking port that Dragon is currently approaching. This is really our first view of both of them in the same picture. So it gives you a good perspective on how close they're getting to each other. Yeah, you can see in that left hand bottom corner, that is the station. And that white dot on your right, on the right side of your screen is Dragon slowly approaching. We're just under five minutes away from waypoint one. We're under 280 meters away from the station. A little more of what we can look for once we do get that go to move past waypoint two, the 20 meter point. Now, of course, we're gonna reach waypoint one first. So we have a couple of steps before this, but uh, we will take about five minutes to get in toward the station from waypoint two. And after that five minutes, we hear the chalk call, and we will be looking for soft capture first. Uh, there are also rotary spring dampers that will soften the contact 
from Crew Dragon uh, to the International Space Station and that soft capture ring will then begin retracting. It'll retract until sensors indicate it's time for these hooks to drive and create a hard capture and that will firmly secure Dragon to station. The hook driving can take about five minutes and the hard mate of Dragon to station can take about three minutes. That means a full seal will be achieved with 12 hard capture hooks. So station on two, I see good our pop data on a C4. Thanks. Copy Kate, thanks. We are just about thirty minutes or so from docking with currently Dragon approaching waypoint one. Waypoint one is approximately 220 meters away from station. And you heard Kate Rubens who is monitoring this, uh, this mission and the arrival of Crew Dragon. She discussed, uh, she used the term RPOP, that stands for Rendezvous and Proximity Ops um, Program and so that is giving her insight into Dragon's position and uh, how it's moving in toward the International Space Station. She'll have some work to do once Dragon arrives, but not until it gets there. Uh, but once Dragon arrives, the Node 2 hatch where they are docking is currently closed on the station side. Dragon SpaceX on the Big Loop, Approach 1 and Soft Capture Ring Extension will begin shortly. Dragon will continue approach to Waypoint 2. Dragon copies, uh, soft capture angle starts here in the first one. Crystal clear view of Dragon as they get the words that everything is still looking good with the systems and they will be moving through waypoint one to waypoint two and that they can expect that soft capture ring we were discussing to extend begin preparing them for docking. We're about 240 meters away, so we're just about a minute away from passing through waypoint one. And we're so close that you could see the forward bulkhead thrusters on Dragon there. It's basically those four uh, kind of circles that you see uh, in the ring uh, where the nose cone uh, is opened on the top of Dragon there. Dragon continuing its slow and steady approach to the International Space Station. Every single maneuver very deliberate when we have two vehicles this close in space, about 226 meters away. And what you're seeing on your screen, on your left hand screen, is the view from the International Space Station looking at Dragon. On your right hand screen, that is a camera view. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Expect reconfiguration of the C2V2 return link shortly. Okay, copies. And we have passed waypoint one, Dragon now about 213 meters away from the International Space Station. We also just heard the core uh, speaking with Crew Dragon to expect a reconfiguration of C2V2. That stands for Common Communications for Visiting Vehicles. 
It establishes bi-directional communications between Crew Dragon and the International Space Station. Now we've passed through waypoint one, so we're about 10 minutes away from waypoint two. Once we approach waypoint two, then we will do a go, no go pull for docking. So we're again, around uh, 30 minutes away from docking here, uh, depending on the timeline, uh, how, uh, when we are, uh, uh, reach each one of these points. We're on our way to waypoint two, which will bring us about 20 meters in front of the space station. We moved right through waypoint one, right through the keep out sphere, that 200 meter uh, invisible line around the International Space Station that helps flight controllers monitor visiting spacecraft. But we will have to hold at waypoint two, that 20 meter mark. They'll conduct their final checks, repair for arrival at the International Space Station. A very clear view from Crew Dragon. That looks incredible. <laughs> Again, this is a view looking at Dragon from station from the Node 2 forward port that Dragon will be docking to today. Station Station Space Ground 2 in step 2 of 1.104. I've just commanded. On our pop reference frame to destination docking port, and I see our pop not receiving Dragon 2 data. Copy all, Kate, we're checking. Flight teams in Mission Control Houston continuing to check that RPOP rendezvous proximity operations program. Station Houston 2, we're going to reset RPOP one more time before you see if that works. Thank you. They're resetting some of that data for Kate Rubens. A reminder, she is not commanding uh, any part of Dragon's arrival. She is monitoring it though, and so looking for some of that data in that program. Again, we are on our way to waypoint two, which will be 20 meters away from the station. Once we reach waypoint two, the vehicle will focus on aligning its docking system with a docking adapter. So preparing for docking, uh, and there will be a go, no go pull prior to initiating that soft capture approach. Here's that same view we were looking at earlier, and you can see even how much closer Crew Dragon has gotten in just the short time since we last received it, having moved through Waypoint 1 since that time period. A little bit more about what Kate Rubens will be doing once Crew Dragon docks. Uh, as we mentioned, the Node 2 hatch is closed during the docking, the station side Node 2 hatch. Kate Rubens will check for a leak and then open it for access to the pressurized mating adapter 2. She'll also manually pressurize the vestibule. That's the area between the A-pass hatch, which is on the station side, and the crew dragon hatch. The A-pass hatch is what is currently exposed to the vacuum of space. It also has a docking target on it that allows Dragon to align itself with the port. Once that pressurization is complete, Kate Rubens will be able to open the A-pass hatch to let some air in. It's a slow process. She'll be opening a valve specifically on the A-pass hatch to let that air in. 
and we'll hold for thermal stabilization before we uh, do some leak checks in the vestibule. We want to make sure that there aren't any fluctuating temperatures that are giving us misleading signals on what the pressure is in the vestibule. We'll conduct the leak check for that space between those two hatches. In the meantime, the crew is doffing and drying and stowing their suits during that thermal stabilization and leak check. They're stowing their equipment. Kate will open the A-pass hatch and remove the docking target. Almost two hours post-docking, these, these checks are taking place during that time. We will look for Dragon's hatch to be opened. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. C2V2 link reconfiguration is complete. The soft capture ring extension is also complete. We are planning to hold momentarily at waypoint two. At that point, we will be asking for your input on lighting conditions and your go to proceed. Do remember that your visors are not required to be down until our final approach. Okay, Dragon copies all, and uh, we'll be holding momentarily at waypoint two, and we will uh, give you a good lighting check at that point. So as you heard, we are on our way to waypoint two, which will be 20 meters away from station, and we will hold and do some checks, do a go, no go hole to ensure that we are okay to approach for docking. And we did hear confirmation that the soft capture ring is extended and ready for that docking. A few minutes ago, we heard them discussing C2V2 common communications for visiting vehicles. They said they would reconfigure that system and just got good confirmation that it had been reconfigured. That's those bi-directional communications between Station and Crew Dragon. Station Houston on two for Kate. We're still troubleshooting uh, the RPOP issue you're having. So we're coming on board on SSC 17 and we'll try to fix that. All right, you are welcome to SSC 17 and also SSC for the main RPOP computer. Copy all, we'll get it working. Mission Control Houston checking back in with Kate Rubens aboard the station who is working to monitor Crew Dragon's arrival. As we mentioned, she is not uh, commanding anything that Crew Dragon is doing and neither are the crew themselves. This is completely autonomous, but she is trying to monitor some of that data and so uh, team members in Mission Control Houston are going to try and reconfigure the RPOP system rendezvous and proximity operations program from the ground. see on your screen again this is a view from station from the node 2 port that dragon will be docking to you can see the sunlight hitting dragon as it gets closer and closer it's starting to get a little bit darker outside as well that's because the international space station and crew dragon are Approaching an orbital nighttime. They are in daylight for 45 minutes and nighttime for 45 minutes. Circling the globe every 90 minutes. They're currently flying 260 statute miles over the Pacific Ocean. Good 
you're looking at a live view of Mission Control Hawthorne here at SpaceX headquarters in California. And uh, if you notice, we have lost video temporarily of Crew Dragon as it's approaching the International Space Station, but that's really no surprise to us. It's something called a TDRS handover, tracking data and relay satellite system. Uh, teams on the ground are able to track when the space station and Crew Dragon will be moving in and out of these handover periods. And we expect to regain video communications with the space station very shortly. In the meantime, it continues. Uh, Crew Dragon continues its approach to Waypoint 2. And we have those views back already. As you mentioned, Jesse, you can really see those four forward bulkhead thr thrusters the closer we get. Wow, and you can really see the detail on the International Space Station with how close we are. We're approaching Waypoint 2, which will be 20 meters in front of the station. That's why you can see it so close up in that last view. Hazard. Station Houston on Space Ground 2. Kate. Okay. Station 2. Hi, Kate. SSC 17 is back up and running for you. We're working on four now. In addition, let us know when your review is complete and you are ready for docking. Copy, and I saw SSC working and it's giving me good range and range rate. Uh, now I've got another, our pop is not receiving Dragon 2 data from PCS message on 17. Copy that, Kate. We'll take a look. Thanks for the extra info. We've now reached waypoint two, so we are holding this position. Going to do some. And I do have a good uh, dragon docking system view on SSC 17 for the dragon docking streaming monitor, and I have a good out of the window view, so I am comfortable and my review is complete. Copy all, thank you. Great news from Kate Rubens. She has the data she's looking for and a great view of Crew Dragon out the window as well. So she's given her go for them to depart Waypoint 2 and move into the International Space Station. As a reminder, we moved directly through Waypoint 1, which put us directly in front of the docking port. You can see it right here. That's the Node 2 forward port where Dragon docked during Demo 1 and Demo 2. Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. The ground is go for approach two. At this point, please confirm that the lighting conditions are acceptable to proceed and let us know if you are go for approach two and docking. Okay, SpaceX, uh, this is Dragon on the big loop. Uh, so the lighting is actually getting worse. We do have a view of the IDA, but we do not have a view of the docking target. In Dragon SpaceX, we copy we are six minutes from sunset. Would you like to hold for those six minutes or do you feel comfortable proceeding? Bye. And SpaceX from Dragon, uh, we'll go ahead and hold for those six minutes if we can. We copy hold. Crew Dragon crew has opted to hold at Waypoint 2 for the time being so they can get some better views of the, uh, the docking Port the docking target on that APAS hatch we were discussing that's on the International Space Station. So they can hold here and that will give them the opportunity for Sunset to uh, come over both the International Space Station and Crew Dragon. There won't be any odd shadows and they should have better visibility. Of course, the crew themselves are not making this maneuver in toward the International Space Station. It is autonomous. Crew Dragon will be doing it by itself, but we want the crew to be able to see the docking target so that they can properly monitor uh, as the vehicle continues to make its approach to Node 2. And the ground is go for docking. 
but we are just waiting for us to get a little bit more light so that Dragon can actually see where it is going to autonomously dock, uh, see the target on uh, node two as it approaches so it can make that soft capture accurately. We're in another one of those satellite handovers we just discussed as well. We should get video communications. Oh, right there. Coming back and... Uh...